Okay, good morning, everybody. And thank you so much for tuning into our class on growing citrus for homeowners. Here today, I brought in an expert because I know a little bit about citrus, but I'm not the expert on the topic. Dr. Zachary works for University of Florida Extension. He is a multi-county citrus agent down in South Florida. He's based in Hendry County, which is kind of Southwest or South Central Florida. And he works mostly with commercial citrus growers, but also works a lot with homeowners and has helped to co-author a number of University of Florida fact sheets on homeowner citrus. And he is the person to ask all of your complicated citrus questions. So Dr. Zachary, let me just go ahead and turn it right over to you here. Thank you, Ben. Can you hear me? I can hear you. You may wanna talk a little bit louder or people can turn off their volume. That way they can hear a little bit better. Okay. I will be talking about citrus greening. Most likely you heard about it. It's the most devastating citrus disease we have in Florida. Some history about citrus greening. Citrus greening is also called Wong Long Ben in Chinese. Sometimes abbreviated HLB which means yellow shoot. Citrus greening has been causing problems in many countries in the world. It was first reported in China more than 100 years ago. And it was first observed in South Africa in 1928. It was found in Saudi Arabia in 1986 found in Brazil in 2004, and it took one year from Brazil to get it in Florida. So we got it in Florida in 2005. And you can see it, it has been found also in other states, such as Louisiana, Georgia, California, Texas, and Alabama. So far, citrus greening has not been reported in Australia and the Mediterranean basin. Again, citrus greening is the most devastating citrus disease in Florida. Citrus greening is a bacterial disease, is a systemic bacterial disease that affects all citrus varieties and citrus relatives. Citrus greening bacteria damage and clog the phloem, which is the food conducting tissue. Then the translocation of food, which is sugars and nutrients to the rest of the tree is restricted and the tree declines and collapses due to food starvation. General symptom of citrus greening is called yellow shoot and blood she model. Yellow shoots are usually the early symptoms that appear on one sector or one branch of the tree. Another symptom of citrus greening is leaf chlorosis or blood she model, which looks like zinc deficiency symptom. You can see the yellow shoot on one side of the tree, on the top part of the tree. After infection, it takes only two months, up to three years for visual symptoms to develop. And in citrus groves, when you see a tree with visual symptoms, there are two to 52 other trees infected, but not showing visual symptoms which makes the eradication program impossible or very difficult. Citrus greening causes many problems, root loss, defoliation, dieback, premature fruit drop, low yield, small leaves, small fruit, green fruit, 
and with bitter taste. You cannot even salvage the juice from citrus greening in fact the trees. The juice will be bitter in taste. You can see the yellow shoots, a lot of leaf drop and thin canopy. You can see through the tree because of the thin canopy. The canopy is not dense anymore. You see again over here the yellow shoots and a lot of dieback from citrus greening. Florida lost one third of citrus acreage and two thirds of the fruit production because of citrus greening. And many growers abandoned their growth. You see again fruit drop, a lot of fruit drop. You can lose 30 to 50% of your crop on the ground before reaching maturity. And again, you see the thin canopy and the dieback. How does citrus greening move? Citrus greening moves from tree to tree by an insect vector called the citrus psyllid. You see them, they are very tiny but you still can see them with the naked eye. You see adult cellids. Again, they are very tiny, but causing a lot of damage to the citrus industry in many parts of the world. Again, you see the citrus cellid, the adults, they usually stand on an angle like 45 degree angle on the leaf or on the stems and suck the liquid from the flowing tissue. You see the adult psyllid on the top and the psyllid nymphs or psyllid babies on the bottom. And you see a white waxy substance secreted by the psyllids. The substance secreted by the psyllids is very rich product called the honeydew. It is an excellent food for ants. So the ants, they come to get that honeydew and at the same time, they defend the psyllid from predators. So they work together. You see psyllid damage caused by feeding of psyllid nymphs. If you see something like this on your citrus tree, it means your tree is infected with citrus greening. Fighting bad bugs with good bugs, which we call biological control. Again, it's using beneficial insects to control invasive pests with predators or parasitoids. There are many species of ladybug or lady beetle that attack citrus psyllids. So these are good bugs. There are many private labs that they rear them and they make them available to growers and homeowners. And you, you can order them online. But when you release them in your place, if you don't have bad bugs, then they move away. This is a parasitoid or a parasitic wasp, very tiny wasp, that when we got the citrus psyllid in Florida, few faculty members from the University of Florida, they went to China, to Taiwan, and to Pakistan, and they brought this parasitic wasp, which is specific for the citrus psyllid. It does not infect or kill only the citrus psyllid. So they are very specific. So this parasitic wasp is called Tamarexia radiata. When you see exit holes in dead psyllids, 
it means indicating a lot of parasitism in that area, which is very good. You won't need to apply pesticides. The division of plant industry within the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services in Florida and the University of Florida have been producing about 3 million wasps per year and releasing them in citrus groves and in backyards. And this is uh, some information for you. If you would like to get a free sample of the wasp to release it in your backyard, you can go to this web page, fill out a form, and the Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services will send you a vial with beneficial insects that you can release to control the citrus cells. You can also use chemicals. Chemicals are used a lot in citrus groves nowadays to control the citrus salad, which is the vector of the citrus greening disease. We can control them chemically by using oil foliarly. And we can use chemicals also by soil drench, like this product over here. Bear advanced. So this product, it will be applied to the soil and will be taken up by the root system and move within the tree canopy and control the insect pests, including the citrus cells. Since January 2006, it has been mandatory to grow citrus nursery trees indoors in screen houses to protect them from citrus canker, citrus salads, and citrus greening. So we don't grow nursery trees outside, outdoors anymore. Coming back to blotchy model, what do we mean by blotchy model? If you look really to the leaf, you see the central part of, of, the, of the leaf let me see if I can use. My box. Here you see the central part of, of, of the leaf. And you see the two circles. If the two circles are symmetrical and mirror image, it's most likely a nutritional deficiency. If you go to the right, right photo, you see one circle has yellow spots and one has green spots. And this is what we mean by blotchy model. So blotchy model, the color of the leaf is not symmetrical within the leaf margin. Again, on this slide, you see the top circle is green and the bottom circle is yellow. So non-uniformity, non-mirror image, it's blood schematical. So if you see something like this on your tree, it means your tree is infected with citrus greening. Citrus greening, is a disaster also on citrus roots. If you look to the picture on the middle, if we see, if we have no visual symptom of citrus greening, that tree has already lost 30 to 50% of its roots. If it's infected and you see visual symptoms on, on the tree, that tree has already lost 70 to 80% of its roots. So it's very devastating disease for roots as well.
greening symptoms on the fruit. They can be confused sometimes with the other symptoms, symptoms of diseases or disorders or nutritional deficiencies. But they include small size fruit, green fruit, and that's why we call it citrus greening because the fruits stay green, is not color very well. And you will end up with lopsided fruit and aborted seeds. And I will show you some photos about these symptoms. You can see over here, the part of the picture on your right hand side from non-infected tree. You see good color, good size of the fruit, good color of the leaves as well. And on the left side, you see yellowing of the leaves the fruit is tiny, is smaller, and is green, does not color very well. So those are most of the symptoms you can see because of citrus greening. Again, you see green, small size of fruit from infected trees versus healthy, large, very attractive fruit on the other side of the slide. Here, what we mean by lopsided fruit, you see some segments are smaller compared to other segments within the, the fruit. And again, you see a green fruit and small size of fruit because of the greening problem. Aborted seeds, sometimes the seeds won't develop completely because of the infection from citrus greening. So far, we don't have a cure for citrus greening, but we have uh, several tools in the toolbox that we can use to alleviate the problem. The most used strategy to cope with citrus greening is solid control trying to reduce the population of the vector and plant nutrition, which is nutritional therapy. We try to take care of the trees very well. In combination of good solid control, we need to have a complete balanced fertilizer program, including for your nutrition and proponents of foliar nutrition consider foliar fertilization as an effective means of stimulating the natural defense mechanism of plants. Other strategies to alleviate citrus greening in commercial groves are the following. We try to plant citrus trees at high density and their protective screens and we are using individual protective covers. And we are growing trees on beds covered with UV reflective polyethylene mulch. And we are using bactericide and applying growth regulators and trying to breed greening resistant tolerant citrus varieties and rootstocks. You can see here citrus grown in pots under screen at high density. This was taken from University of Florida IFAS Citrus Research and Education Center in Lake Alfred. And you can see after two years and a half what you get. You get a very good yield, very good quality fruit and the cellet can naturally penetrate through the screen and infect those trees. So it's a good way to grow citrus nowadays because of citrus greening. And you see grapefruit are doing very well as well. You can get a lot of yield with high quality fruit and all the fruit can be packed 100% 
and sold for the fresh market. Individual protective covers. These are for young trees. They protect the trees from the Asian citrus salad. So the Asian citrus salad cannot penetrate through the bag and infect the trees. And this way you can protect your trees up to two years with the small bags and up to four years with the bigger, bigger bags. This is uh, growing trees on polyethylene mulch. The strategy is to confuse the salad. The salad will be disoriented and repelled when you have polyethylene mulch in the grove because the polyethylene mulch will reflect the sky and then the salad Will, uh, will not know which way is the sky and which way is the ground. That way you can repel them from the grove. Here is the use of antibiotics like oxytetracycline. We just started using it in commercial groves. So this is the first year we are trying this injection of oxytetracycline. And you can see the effect is dramatic. You see the control versus the treated area. The treated area, the trees are coming back, cannot be very dense and very good fruit production. There are many growers that they give up on growing citrus because of citrus greening, but we still have a, a lot of people, a fair number of people who are still growing citrus and they are very optimistic. They did not really give up. And uh, if you take care of your trees, they can perform very well. And you can see these trees that they have been infected with citrus greening since 2006 and they are still performing very well. So you need to have the time, you need to have the money to take care of citrus trees. If you give up, it does not take very long for the trees to collapse. So two to three years and the trees are completely dead. You see a different management here of two citrus groves. So if you take care of the trees, like on the right hand side, the trees can perform very well. But if you are really halfway or sideway or not taking care of the trees very well, then the trees won't perform very well. So again, there is a lot of optimism and most likely you will see growers replanting and planting new groves as well. This variety is becoming very popular because it's considered to be relatively tolerant to citrus greening. It's called sugar bell. It's a hybrid between clementine and honey bell. It has been released by the breeding program at the University of Florida. And we have many other varieties that they are tolerant to citrus greening. In the pipeline, some of them are released and they are in commercial nurseries and they have been propagated and they will be available very soon. So look for those tolerant varieties if you are still interested in growing citrus in your backyard. So this is one of the preferred varieties sugar bell, the fruit will mature around Thanksgiving for weeks before, be, before honey bell. Honey bell will mature around the Christmas time usually. 
So again, you see the fruit is very juicy, very attractive. So think about growing sugar beans. The Australian finger lime is also tolerant to citrus greening. It's sometimes called caviar lime. The tree is bushy, medium in size, but very thorny. That's the problem of this tree. It's very, very thorny. So when you harvest the fruit, you have to have the very long sleeves and very long gloves. The interior of finger limes contains caviar-shaped vesicle that bursts with lemon-like flavor. The color of the fruit ranges from green to brown to red and almost black. So Australian finger limes are considered to be tolerant to citrus greening. You see the different colors of finger limes. These are being sold like maybe close to $20, $25 a pound to some high level restaurants. Lemons are considered to be relatively tolerant to citrus greening as well. In general, you can grow them but lemons are sensitive to freezing weather. So you have to be careful not to grow them in central Florida or the northern part of Florida. Tree care. So this is if you want to grow citrus in your backyard in the greening era, you have to take care of them very well. You cannot plant them and then do nothing. You need to water them every other day to avoid any water stress. And you have to know that the lawn irrigation system does not supply enough water to the trees because they have deeper and more extensive root system. They are not like the lawn. You are watering with shallow roots. And citrus needs a complete analysis fertilizer. You have to start fertilizing two weeks after planting and then apply fertilizer every month from February through November, 10 times a year. And you should avoid burning roots with high amounts of fertilizer applied at once. And you have to spread fertilizer evenly underneath the canopy of the trees. This is a fertilizer table that we recommend to follow. So again, 10 application of soluble fertilizer on a monthly basis, avoiding December and January. And you can use controlled release fertilizer twice a year. Again, in combination with good soil fertilization program, you need to foliar feed with micronutrients. And micronutrients include zinc, manganese, and boron. So you need to follow your feed with these at least three times a year, in the spring, the summer, and the fall. And the application should be, should be done when the new leaves are about fully expanded. This one example of the foliar spray that you can use. So this is a micronutrient spray that you can apply foliarly three times a year to keep citrus trees healthy. And because of the salad, we have to spray with oil every two weeks to reduce the salad population. 
because you need to knock down the cells which are the vector of the setter screening disease. If they keep coming to your trees and infecting your trees, then you won't have a crop. In summary, you have to irrigate every other day when there's no significant rain. You need to soil apply a complete granular fertilizer every month from February through November, or apply controlled release fertilizer twice a year in February and September. And you need to follow your feed with micronutrients at least three times a year. And follow your spray with oil every two weeks to reduce the cellet population. Any question? Yes, Dr. Zachary, we do have a couple questions here. Uh, Stephanie and Zach asked, they said, I have read that the uh, systemic treatments like the Bears Advanced Treatment are toxic and can be unsafe to consume depending on when the treatment has been applied. They're attempting to grow a mostly organic garden, but it seems that might be difficult to do with citrus. What would you recommend uh, as far as the use of the systemic treatments for citrus trees grown for consumption? And I can add that if you're using oil sprays, oil sprays generally are uh, allowed in commercial um, organic use. So that's, that's an alternative. Yes, you are right, Bill. Oil can be used in organic programs. Concerning Bayer Advance, you have to read the label. They can tell you when you can harvest the fruit after application. And we don't recommend its use during the rainy season because it will leach, you will lose it. So it's better to use it during the dry season. But if you use oil every other week, you will be fine. Okay, that makes sense. And Dan asked earlier, how often do we apply horticulture oil and fertilizer? And I think you went over that close to the end there. Yes. The summer uh, slide at the end is good. Okay. I, I can email it to you and share it with the, with the people. Okay, sure. If you want to email um, the PowerPoint to me, when I email everybody later on with a link to the recording, I can go ahead and include that also. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Eileen asked with the, uh, the bags, the coverings on the trees, how do the bees get through the net to pollinate them? For citrus, you don't need bees. We don't need the cross-pollination. You can grow oranges by themselves and they will do fine. They will set a good crop. You can grow grapefruit. You can grow lemons. There is no need for cross-pollination. One of the varieties that needs cross-pollination is really honeybell. And we don't grow it anymore because it's sensitive to citrus greening. But most of most of citrus varieties, they don't need bees. They don't need the cross pollination. Okay. Anne asked, how can we get the new varieties? The new, like uh, the sugar bell variety. There are commercial nurseries that they are making them available to commercial growers and to homeowners. Okay, I just look it up online, just Google it. I know um, there was a nursery in Lake Panasofki, I think it's Brightleaf, yes. and they're rearing yeah. the uh, sugar bell. You might want to look them up and check with them. Yeah, that nursery produces trees for the homeowner. Okay, it's probably still a little hard to get. They might be out of stock on them, and if you're looking for a large number of them, it might be a little difficult. But I'm sure if you look online, you can find the nurseries that are growing them. And Sandy said, somebody once told me not to fertilize if the tree is in bloom. They said it will drop the blooms in the fruit. Is this true? Not true. Okay. <laughs> Unless you apply too much. Mm -hmm. But if the yearly recommendation followed 
and you apply it, you divide it into two, uh, 10 applications, then you don't worry about it. Okay, so safe to fertilize when it's blooming. Um, somebody asked, what is the impact of foliar oils on pollinators? Does it hurt them? No. Okay. And Jen said, I moved into a home with three trees with greening. Can I raise new healthy trees or should I have the diseased trees removed and wait before replanting healthy trees? If the trees that they are doing, if the trees are doing very well, you don't need to pull them out because the cells will, will come really anyway. You have, okay. you, you have all the trees or you don't have all the trees, the cells will be coming and will be affecting the new trees. Okay, when is the best time to plant a new citrus tree in your backyard? You can plant them really any time of the year, but I prefer planting them in the spring. Okay. Is there a variety of grapefruit that is more resistant to the psyllid? No. And somebody asked, I planted grapefruit from seed about eight years ago, no flowers yet, should they give up? Yeah, it's a mistake to grow really grapefruit from seeds. It may take really, like you, you said, eight years to 13 years for that seedling to start really blooming and setting a crop. You should buy really a grafted or a budded tree from a nursery. Okay, somebody said, Hillary says, my Meyer lemon tag, the little tag that's on it when you purchase it, shows it was treated in December. Is it covered? Oh, it is covered in psyllids. Is resistance an issue? Can you repeat the question, Bill? Uh, Hillary said, my Meyer lemons, uh, the little ISD tag that's on the tree when you purchase it, the tag from the nursery, says that it was treated systemically in December but it's covered in psyllids, is resistance an issue? Probably so, I did not Partly, how long is the systemic treatment good for? It's not good really for more than three months. Okay. So I would think that if you, if you actually do have a number of psyllids on your Meyer lemon tree, that's gonna be a problem because they might be infected with greening and yes. transmit it to the tree. And somebody asked, can I grow citrus trees in the yard that has a border area with mature pines? No, no problem. I don't see a problem with that. And one of our regular listeners, uh, Andrew Dave, says, thank you, Dr. Zachary and Dr. Lester. Do I plant lemon shrub in a container? Yes, you uh, can. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, you saw you saw some of the trees growing underneath underneath the plastic or underneath the screen. You can you can grow them in pots. You can grow citrus in pots, in containers. What size container would you need? What I showed you, seven to ten gallons, will be okay. Okay. Okay, well, thank you so much, everybody. I don't see any other questions on here. So, oh, here's one more quick one. Oh, somebody says, are loquats susceptible to the psyllid? And thank you. Loquat is not a citrus. Yes, so your loquats are safe. Your loquats might get other problems, but citrus greening and psyllids aren't one of them. Okay, well, I don't see any other questions here. Uh, just a couple of thank yous. So, Dr. Zachary, thank you so much. Thank you.